In this video, I'll be going over some of the important features of the skull that we will be studying in different mammal species this week. The skull is composed of two parts, the cranium, which serves as a case to protect and surround the brain, and then the mandible. They fit together and function at the temporomandibular joint, or TMJ, which you see here, and play a role in biting and chewing. In the process of biting and chewing, the jaw acts as a lever, specifically a type 2 and a type 3 lever, as described in your lab handout. By looking at the features of the teeth and the skull and the jaws, we can understand a lot about the feeding strategies of different animals. One way we can do this is by comparing the different types of teeth that they have. So in this uh, chimpanzee, you can see flattened molars, sharp pointing canines, and then chisel-like incisors in the front. Fairly typical combination of teeth for an omnivore, or an animal that eats different types of plant and animal food. But we can see other variations of this in different types of animals. How we will also study the function of the jaw is based on what we call mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is a physics concept that relates to the efficiency of energy transfers in a lever. And so in our studies, we will be comparing the lengths of the end levers in this, so the distance from the TMJ uh, joint to different reference points on the jaw, and then the out lever length, which will again be from the TMJ joint to different out lever lengths at the, the molars and then out of the canines. When we compare these values, this gives us an understanding of the efficiency of energy input to energy output whenever the animal is chewing. And so that's one thing we'll be comparing among animals with different types of feeding strategies. To just show you some of the types of skulls we will compare in this lab, I've got some examples of skulls here to show you. So one group of animals are carnivores. These are animals which have a special modified type of tooth called a carnassial tooth. So looking at this wolf skull, what we can see is these sharpened wedge um, knife-like teeth which come together with a slicing motion as the animal chews on meat and other types of tough animal tissues. We also find uh, similar combinations of carnassial teeth uh, when we look at the skulls of felines. And so here we have a cheetah skull, and we see that they have exclusively these carnassial teeth in the back, which reflects their diet of solely eating meat. Now, as I said, what we're gonna be doing in this lab is comparing mechanical advantage. What you're doing is by comparing these in lever links to the out lever links is getting an idea of energy transfer, again, among these animals with different feeding strategies. So, uh, like I said, we've got the, the carnassial teeth animals to look at. We'll also be looking at different species of primates, like the uh, chimpanzee that I've already shown you, as well as um, humans, and then um, skulls um, such as this gorilla uh, that you can see here. And this brings us to an important Point when we think about mechanical advantage and how uh, mandibles function, that bite strength is not the only thing that you think about uh, in terms of that mechanical advantage. Remember, that's just telling you about efficiency of energy transfer. What you also want to consider is the area where the muscles attach. So whenever an animal chews, we've got several muscles that are involved, but the two main ones are the temporalis muscle, which attaches to the temporal bone, and you can see that would be on this region, on this gorilla skull, and then you have the masseter here, which attaches to the bones of the zygomatic arch to the bottom of the mandible. And so both of those muscles and some others play a role in chewing. But it's not just that mechanical advantage from the uh, lever action, you also want to think about the area of muscle attachment. And so you can see, I'll turn this around on this gorilla skull, not only do we have this huge area for muscles to attach, but also there are these very thick um, and, and tall crests where you can get even more muscles attaching. The point I'm trying to make, what I want you to understand, is that bite force is not just measured by the mechanical advantage, but it's also um, influenced by the number of muscles that are playing a role in biting. And so there was a gorilla and a chimpanzee that we looked at for our second group. Our third group of animals to look at are primarily um, herbivores and, and their feeding strategies. And so here I have a skull of an okapi. And we can see that in herbivores, uh, we have lots and lots a long rows of flattened molars. But we also have this feature called a diastema, which is a region in the jaw where there are no teeth. So they may still have canines like in a horse, but they'll be much more 
reduced, and then a few small incisors out at the tip. And this is a very common feature that we see in animals, like I said, that are herbivores. Another thing that we see in these types of animals is this very large area for masseter a muscle attachment on the jaw. And so here, this is Nokapi, which is an herbivore. I'll show you another similar skull. Um, here is a rabbit. Uh, we likewise see the long incisors out here and that diastema uh, with rows of uh, flattened molars in the back. And then just to show you, uh, we also find this in rodents. Here's a skull of the largent, largest rodent um, on earth, a capybara. And you can see the diastema, the long gnawing teeth in the front, and then the flattened, um, get this here, uh, where you can see the flattened chewing molars um, in the back. And so that's what we'll be looking at to compare um, the mechanical advantage among uh, the animals uh, with those different combinations of teeth. But one other set of animals that I've included in uh, your data set that you'll be working with in lab, and that's uh, animals like this dolphin, which have a very long uh, mouth, a very long mandible out here. And when you look at the back, you can see that uh, the, the in-lever length is fairly short here to go uh, from here to the to the, the uh, part for the T, where the TMJ uh, joint is at. And what you see as you start looking at these data is that you get a very low mechanical advantage. But what you're actually also seeing is a trade-off that you get in levers. While you're seeing uh, that there's this lower mechanical advantage, what you actually get is an increase in speed. So think about how uh, when this uh, dolphin um, bites, the muscles uh, at the back of the jaw they move very little distance, but out at the tip of the mouth, it moves a long distance in the same amount of time. So what you're getting there is a trade-off between strength and speed, which is very important in animals with this type of feeding strategy. I want you to think about what that would be because we find a similar type of phenomenon uh, whenever we look at something like an alligator. Um, now, this is not a mammal. This is a reptile. But we also see that very long mouth, which uh, can snap and close very quickly with just a very small movement of the muscles back here at their TMJ joint to make that occur. So these are the things we'll be looking at in lab this week and that you'll be calculating uh, some mechanical advantage values and making comparisons among animals with different feeding strategies. Hope that looking at these skulls here today um, has helped you in preparing for lab. See you then.